Is daf is daf he. The Mishnah says umisachnin es kilkule hamayim shebishusarab. So we have cisterns of water where the rainwater collects, and if there's some crack or some damage, and if it's bishusarabim, it's in a public domain, and as a result of this damage, let's say this branches of trees or soil or rocks or whatever it has it that clogs up these cisterns, you're allowed to clear them out on Cholomoid for the sake of the rabbi. Now the language of the Mishnah is mechatet in also, which the Gemara's medayik chatita in chafir lo. So you're allowed to clear out all of this clogged stuff that's clogging up the cisterns of water and remove all the debris, that's muta, that's permitted. But the implication is that to dig a new cistern, even for the sake of the rabbim, that would not be permissible. Om Rabbi Yaakov, Om Rabbi Yochanan, Lo Shanu El She'en Rabbim Tzrichlem. The Mishnah is addressing a case where the water supply is not necessary for the drinking of the people, of the public, because Havel Rab and Srikhalahem had it been a case where the public needed to drink from that cistern, then Afilu Khafira Mutter, they'd be even allowed on Cholomoy to dig a new cistern. Because, as we said on the previous Amud, Maleches Cholomoy, Litzorche Rabim is Mutter. The Gemara asks, Vachi Rabim, Srikhalahem, Bishari, is Rab Yochanan's assumption and his ruling correct? But Sanya, how will you reconcile it from with the following Brisa? Ototin Boros Sichinuma Oroshal Yochid. You're allowed to clear out various kinds of sisters, either Boros or which are probably uh ditches, Sichinum Oros are different kinds of caves of different shapes whether they're square or triangular, siach, for example, ma'ora is square, a siach is like long and narrow, but this is only mutter because of chotetim. And you might say, well, that's only shalyachit. But then the b'risa continues, says, we ain't sarach lomit shal rabin, that heta, that leniency that we're going to allow you on Cholomoy to do this work of Chotetim, that applies equally and even moreover to be matir in the case of Boros Shal Rabin. But v'ein chofrin Boros Sichin Boros Shal Rabin. However, Chafir itself, even for the sake of the public, is prohibited. V'ein Tzorch Lom Shal Yochin, it goes without saying that for the sake of a Yochin it's going to be prohibited. So it would seem that when we're talking about Ma'oro Shal Rabin or Sichet Shal Rabin, Boro Shal Rabin, my Lab Shabin Sichel Lam, it's a case where the public needs it. So on Yontif, this is where they're going to get access to their water. That's where the supply of water will be drawn from. So how could the Brisa prohibit digging the sister in the ditch, the Ma'oro Sichin, the caves, etc., Lachatchila? That's against Rabbi Yochanan, who says clearly that Litzorche Rabim, it's Mutter. Lo, the Ephraim answers that Bishain Rabim Tzrikhalahem. So it means that the question here is whether it's owned by an individual or owned by the public, but it's not a situation where the public needs access to the water on Cholomoy, on Yontiv. Because that would certainly, according in the light of Rabbi Yochanan, truly really be mutter, even be chafira. So the Gemara says, can we really accept this interpretation of the Brisa, the Kavosa Gabi Yochid? Whatever you'll say about Shal Rabin, you have to now apply it to Shal Yochid. And you're talking about a case of Ein Srichim Lehem. Nu, if Ein Ayochid Tzorch Lehem, Chatit Would we be 
matter, be lenient, unclogging all the dirt and all the debris that fell into these ditches and so forth that are owned by Yochid, if there's no need to get involved in that malacha on Cholomoy, there's nothing pressing even for the Yochid. So Chatita Mishari Vatanya, we learned in Abraisa, Boro Sichin Amor Shal Yochid, Konsim Mayim L'Sochan, Avalo Chotetim. And you see clearly there's no heter for Chatita, even to clear the debris out of the ditches and the caves, we're only allowed to gather the water there. Again, what exactly is the Chiddush here that you're allowed to gather the water in the ditches? I mean, what action are you involved in? And the Mishnabur writes in Sharetzion that we're talking about directing waters even into these existing uh, reservoirs of water. And we're allowed to do that, but but to work in the ditches and in the reservoirs and clear them out of debris, that's prohibited. Those shofanists sid came if there are cracks in the plaster of these reservoirs, of these ditches, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to plaster them up to fix those uh, cracks. But apparently, there's no heter of chafira to dig them lechatchila, which is called uh, creating a brand new, a brand new uh, reservoir. That's awesome. So again, bishlema, it would make sense if the brisa that we spoke about earlier. If that permission would refer to a case where the water was needed during the Yontif, then we could say this price, which prohibits it, because it says, that's a case where you don't need it. So that would be a simple reconciliation of the two prices. Price number one is talking about a case where you need the water on Yantif and therefore Khatita is mutter. The second price that prohibits Khatita is talking about where you don't need the water on Yantif. But you just told me that the first price is talking about a case where you don't need these reservoirs and pits and so forth ditches on, on Yantif. You don't have to clear them out. And if that be the case, then when it says chotutin boros, etc., we're allowing chatita even when you don't need it. What are you going to do with this price that says you're not allowed to do chatita? Elamai. So let's go back to the first price so, and say b'she yochid sarchlem. It's a case where the yochid needs these ditches in order to get access to water on yontiv. Tikavosi gabri rabim. Then the parallel case with regard to a publicly owned ditch would be Ksharabim Srikhan Lahem, the Yochid needs it, and the Rabim needs it. He was then therefore Khafir Miyasa. You know, why why should we prohibit even Khafira in a case where Rabim Srikhan Lahem? And we saw again Rabbi Yochanan says that indeed Rabim Srikhan Lahem feel Khafira Mutter. But we'll prove that point from a Bryce of Asanya. This is actually the third b'risa that we have in our sugya. Boro sifin ma'oro shal yachid konsim mayim l'sochan. So then, here in this b'risa, we're allowing you to do uh, this gathering of the water that we discussed before. Chotet and also, you're allowed to clear out the garbage that's inside, that's clogging up the pitches, the ditches. Avalo shofenes sidkeim. We don't allow you to plaster the cracks. And we're not going to allow you to clear out that which is the debris that fell that fell into them. And how much more so we're not allowed to smear them with lime. But we shall rob him. So you see that if there's a need for the public, then clearly you're allowed to dig the ditch. 
And you're telling me that the previous price is talking about a case of Yochid Tzarech Lahem, which means that in the case of the Rabbim, it's also Tzarech Lahem. And yet, the Brisa prohibits Chafira and Avalo, right? And not only that, it's, it's very strange because if we go back to the first Brisa for a moment, First price, it says, Ein chofren, even shall rob it. But you're telling me it's a case of Robin Trichim Lamb. I mean, here clearly we see from this price number three that Robin Trichim Lamb, you're allowed to do a, a chafira, even lechatchila, to start from the get go to dig these pits. Therefore, the Gemara says, Al Kasha Hachamaisa, right? The first price, Says that even in a case of Borosich and Marshal Rabin, Ein Chofrin, that becomes difficult. It certainly contradicts the last price that we just had, price number three, Tritz Hochi. Let's go back to the first price and change the Nusach a little bit. And it should read as follows Chotetim Boros Shel Yochid. That if it's a barshal yachid, we're going to allow chatita, right, to clear out the debris if they need the water on yachid. It goes without saying that if it's a publicly owned bar, for sure you're allowed to do chatita. But it's kisharabim trichem And then when we get to the case, of Rabim Trichem Lahem, Afilu Chafira Muta. That's what we're adding to the Brisa. That in that case, that Rabim Trichem Lahem, even Chafira Lachatchila's Muta, the Ein Chofrin Boro Sichin Moroshal Rabim, which ain't Rabim Trichem Lahem. The Ein Tzarch Lahem, which ain't Yachid. The Chi Ein Yachid Tzarch Lahem, Afilu Chatita Nami Os. So in the case of a Boros or Rabin, we would allow Chatit even if Enam Tzrichelem, but if it's Tzrichelem, we're going to allow Afilin Chafira. In the case of Boros or Yochid, it's only when it's Tzrichelem that we could allow Chatita, but not Chafira. Omar Avashi, Maslisa Nami Deka, I could support this conclusion from our Mishnah. The Ketani, it says in our Mishnah, Osim Kol Tzorche Rabin, That anything necessary for the rabbin is mutter. Now look at the language of the Mishnah. It says kol. So the Gemara asks kol asuye mai. The word kol in the Mishnah always comes as a ribui. Lav lasuye chafira. Says Ravashi, it makes sense to say that the word kol here is coming to include digging a brand new reservoir or cistern or ditch or a pit. The Gemara says that's not a proof. If you Building your case on your diak of the word kol in the Mishnah, lo. But rather, the extra kol is coming to include a different case, la suya desanya, as we learned in Abraisa, yotzim lekavet es adrochim. We're now talking about sending out chluke bezdin to go out during cholamoi, and people are moving back and forth. Maybe there's also ole regal. And there are thorns in the road. So we're going to send out the Shlukei Bezdin to check out if there are thorns in the road, clear that out, they're dangerous. Will the Sakinis or Chovos to repair all the public roads? Vesa Isteratios. Isteratios is a marketplace. Vilamod es mikvos. And we have to measure the mikvos, make sure that they have our boy so the minimum volume of water so that the people could be covered in the mikvah. If they chance upon a mikvah that has less than the required 40 saw, so if you have water that we could direct into the mikvah to bring it up to the shear of our boim saw, we're allowed to do this. And we know that there's a severe punishment for a negligence on the part of the Shluchei Bezdin, they didn't go out to check this out, she called Domim, she Nishpechu Shom. If Chas people 
were injured, or maybe even worse, as a result of their their pshia that they didn't go out, they were negligent. Is malaleim akasukilim shofchim? As if they had spilled that blood. Talmud Lomer v'ahaya alecha damim. The Torah says that the blood will be upon you. And that's a posting in Varim Perkutes. And that's a case in which it's Bezdin that's obligated to try a murderer. And if they don't do so, the blood that was spilled is counted as if it's on the heads of Bezdin. Gemara says that these cases that we mentioned before could not possibly be what the Mishnah had in mind with the extra ribui of the word kol, of hedrik panila. Because the Mishnah states explicitly, So what are you adding in the word kol when it says that the shluche bezdin are out there to repair the roads, the streets, the mikvos? So Gemara goes back and says, We also called Sarchei Rabbim Lasuye Mai, Lab Lasuye Chafira, Shma Minom. Let's go back to Rav Ashi's original understanding that when it says called Sarchei Rabbim, it means even Chafira, if there's a need for the Rabbim to have access to water, that's a public need, and we can matter even, even Chafira. The Mishnah says, Mitzayin es hakvaros, that wherever there's a kever, we have to put a tziyun kever, a marker, so that people would know that there's a corpse that's buried there. Omer Abishim ben Pazi, remez l'tziyun kvaros menator minayin. Can we find a source in the Torah, or at least allusion in the Torah, to the fact that we have to set aside these monuments, these markers for grave sites? Talmud Lomar, and we're going to have to derive it from a pasuk in Yechezkel, when Yechezkel had a nevua about the Melchemes Gogumogu and the aftermath in the future of that terrible war, Eretz Yisrael will be littered totally with corpses of the army of, of, of Gog. And even after the land has been mainly cleansed, if anyone sees a remnant of a human bone, then he has to put up a marker near there. And the Pusik says, the raw etzim, he finds a bone, Adam of a human being, Ubana etzotzir, he's got to build a marker on it. Now, again, this is only an illusion, this is only a remez to the requirement of putting up a tzion kever. You can't derive a chova from here. Markers are required for corpses that transmit tumor through the method of ohel, where the corpse would convey and transmit tumor to a person who passes over them. And that's true even if it was buried. So there's a need to mark it in order to alert people to keep their distance. Now, if you have something that's only Mavir uh, too, but only is metame through Mago or Hesse, but not through Tumas Oel, like for example, a bone from one of Gog's soldiers would not transmit Tuma through an Oel because individual bones, as a general rule, only convey Tuma through Mago or Maso, you know, contact or moving them. And non-Jewish corpses, at least according to one opinion, even if they're whole, the entire corpse did not transmit tumor through Ohel. So the situation that is addressed, the, the scenario addressed in this also, is certainly not going to teach us what we want to derive. And burial itself would be enough to obviate the need for a tzion kever. So we're talking about something that is metame be oel and really requires the tzim kever, and that's not the case that Yechezkel is talking about after the Melchemes Gogu Mogo. Omele Ravino Ravashi, Ha Mekami Delese Yechezkel Man Omar, 
all right, you have somewhat of a, an illusion in the Pasuk Yechezka. But until Yechezka came around, there was no requirement of a Tzion Kever. So this was a question that Ravina addressed to Ravashi. Ravashi says, what about you, Ravina? The underlying premise of your cash, Ahadi Yom Rav Chizdo, Dover Zemi Taurus Moshe Rabbeinu Lola Madu, according to Rav Chizda, um, we're talking now about an RL, a Kohen RL, who's possibly Avod in the Mikdash. We don't learn this from the Torah. But Midiri Yechezka Ben Buzi Laman. And there's an entire chapter in Yechezkel, which is a chapter that's, desi- that's dedicated in chapter Memdal to the laws of Avodas Kohanim. So the psul of an RL in a Kohen situation for Avodas is derived from this possible called Ben Echar Erel Lev, Erel Basalo, Yovala Mikdoshi. Is Makavi Delesim Yechezkelman Omar? Who said, where do we? Where do we derive this from before Yechezka? Elo, we have no choice but to assume that Gemara Gmirle, we have Allah Lamochmi Sinai, that transmits this halacha, that an RL, a coin RL, is Posel Avoda. Also Yechezka, we ask Machia Kra. Okay, so Yechezka came along and gave us a, uh, a support in a post. Is therefore Hachanami here too, with regard to Tzion Kever. Is Gemara Gemirle? It's Halach Lamot Shemitzina. We also Yechez. Can we ask for Chayakra? Yechez did nothing more than offer us support from a text, from a verse in the Scriptures. Rabbi Yavo Amar Yehoch. Rabbi Yavo has a different alternative source as a remez for Tzion Kever, and that's in the Parsha Mitzorah. It says V'Tamei Tamei Yikra that the Mitzvah himself has to, so to speak, scream out, it's a post again, Fayyukra Perakut Gimel, that I am a Tome. And he says it twice, Tome, Tome. Tuma Korolo, the Omer Slow Pro. That Tuma itself, so to speak, is crying out. Anyone who passes by and says, Proch, Proch means stay away. So the Pusik really requires that the Mitzorah alert of the Zedis Tzomi, Revo derives from this, that any Tumah should be clearly marked so that people will recognize it and keep their distance. They know Rabbi Uziel, Bar Braid, Rabbi Uziel, Rabba. He's the grandson of Rav Uziel, Rabba. Tumah Korolo Vyomersal Prosh. So the Gemara asks, wait a minute, is this going to tell me that we have to mark graves just like we have to make sure that people know about the Tumas Mitzorah, we need that Pasuk of a Tommy Tommy Yikra, for a ruling, a, a halacha that's derived from this Pasuk in a Bryce, the Tommy Tommy Yikra, the Mitzorah who's suffering now in his isolation, has to share with the public his misfortune, so that the Rabbim will be Mavakesh Rachamim on his part. So when it says Tommy Tommy, this has nothing to do with alerting people are passing by that there's tumor that exists here, but rather to arouse the sympathy of the passers by so that they will pray on behalf of the afflicted person, in this case, the Mitzorah. So when it says in Cain, Lichtovit Tommy Yikro. Why the double language tummy tummy? My tummy tummy, chmami not tarate. We derive two things from this possible. Tummy yikra means he has to notify people so that they'll pray on his behalf. But tummy tummy, the extra word tummy, is there to notify people that he's tummy and they should be on alert to distance themselves from tumma. So that's the source of Rabbi Avo. Now the Gemara goes on to another possible source, Abayoma Rihacha. Let's derive it. From Parshas Kedoshim, and it says there, Vayikru Yutes, make sure to get rid of any stumbling block in front of a blind person. And here, if no one knows that there's a kever 
there, then we're all blind, so to speak. So we have to notify that there's a, a uh, takol over here, a stumbling block. And Rav Papa Amar, he has a different pasuk from, Yeche, from Yeshaya Novi, and that is, the Omar solu solu panu der pave pave, clear the road. So it means that we have to clear the road of anyone who might, if he doesn't know about the corpse that's buried there, might contract to move. Rabbi Omar, he has a a uh, a duke in the end of that same pasuk solu 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 panu derech, and there it says, "Arimu v'chol mi derech ami, remove the obstacle from my people's path." Let's derive it from a posuk in Shmos Perikut Ches, and there it says, "And a derech means to make sure that they know which derech they're allowed to travel on, because there's no fear that they might be mekabel tuma." He has an alternative posuk, and this posuk in Vayikra Perik Tesvav. Says Vizartem Espere Yisro Mitumosam. Mitumosam means you shall separate the children of Israel from their Tuma. Rav Ashi Omar Ushmartem Es Mishmarti. The Torah says in that same chapter in Vayikra, you shall safeguard my charge. And what does that mean? Asu Mishmar Samishmarti. In other words, if there's something that requires a uh, Shmira and protection, then you should make a mishmeras. Ani hine nasati lecha es mishmeras trumosai. I give you in charge of my trumos, and that means that you have to protect truma that it shouldn't be contaminated. And there's an illusion here to provide an added measure of protection for those who possess truma by clearly marking off locations of truma that they should avoid. Ravina Amar. He derives it from a posuk in Tehillim. Vesam derech ar enu b'yesha elukim. And one who sets the way, that's called some derech, I will show him ar enu b'yesha elukim, the salvation of God. So setting the way here means providing a sign to indicate where people may travel or may not travel. Om Rabbi Yeshua, Ben Levi, a call has some or host a little bit of a gadic uh, interlude here. If a person appraises his way, some are host of, he always looks back at his ways and he investigates them and he does a cheshben a nefesh, he'll witness the salvation of the Holy One. In other words, the salvation of Klal Yisrael through the Holy One. And he's always constantly weighing the loss that he might incur by doing a mitzvah against the eternal reward that it might bring and the gain that he might realize through a sin against the far greater loss that will result. He attains genuine righteousness and is protected from every sin. Shenem avesom der altikri vesom. Don't read it as setting elavesom. Derech ar eno, v'yeshalukim. Read as one who appraises in this way, I will show him the salvation of God. So it means the middle letter of the word v'shsam should be read as a shin and not as a sin. And we're not changing the uh, the Mesorah here, we're just saying that al piderech hadrush, we can discover a deeper meaning in the apostle. Rabbi Yanai, havile ahu talmidu yadet talmid, Kept asking him questions on a daily basis. However, Bishabsa on Shabbos, the Regila, and it was Shabbos during a regal like Sukkot or Pesach or possibly even Shvuas, Lavi Makshi. He would not stand up and ask a Kasha on Rabiana. These were very public drushos, and if he would ask a Kasha, this very sharp Talmud, it could be that Rabbi Yadai would be embarrassed. And since it was a great public, he wouldn't embarrass or even have a suffix of embarrassing his Rebbe. Here on Daf Hay of the Bays, Kari Le Rabbi Yadai called a Pasuk on him, Bisham Derech 
our enemy shall kim. One who appraises his way, I will show him the salvation of God. Does he why he wisely assessed his way that he would only ask a cash on the on on the Shia, but in this public forum, he was careful not to ask a kasha and not to jeopardize and expose Rabbiani possibly to humiliation in public if he didn't know the answer to his question. Here we are on the A. Hey,